Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. You know what? I feel like I should make that countdown a little bit more exciting. It's a bit edgy, isn't it? I think yeah, yeah. It's a bit gritty. I think you, I think you need something in there, like something's flying around the screen or something. It's like what's the bad news coming, and it's this countdown. <laughs> well, look, I thought it was snow. Maybe I was going to press it again, but we won't. We won't, we won't waste everyone's thirty seconds, so they'll never get back in their life again. Exactly. Well, thank you for joining me. Now, if you don't know who Mr. Alex Chisnell is, he is the co-host of the Alex and Sabrina show with myself on Clubhouse. We smashed it last year, but apart from that, he pretty much is the person to go to when you're looking to launch, relaunch podcasts, get a number one podcast. And he's worked with some of the biggest names in the industry, including Lush, Grenade, as well as anyone you probably know. Alex, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on. You are welcome. Now, we have slightly dodgy Wi-Fi as I'm currently in Mexico and this is the best it's going to get, but it's okay. Standard. Yeah. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and uh, a quick summary of what you're up to this year? Yeah, sure. So, Sabrina said, I'm Alex Chisnell. Sabrina and I have hosted a uh, daily show over on Clubhouse, latest audio app that was launched last year. Uh, we built a significant following on there and... Myself, background is in audio, um, so I started out at the BBC, fast forward a couple of years later, shall we say, and now I'm in the, the podcasting space. So I have an agency called Popreneur. Um, we help entrepreneurs, uh, brands launch their own top 10 podcasts, and uh, I also host my own podcast, Screw It, Just Do It, which uh, we got to number one in 10 countries last year. And yeah, previous to that, I've got a history with Virgin, worked for Richard Branson for many years, Virgin Atlantic, and then Virgin Startup, helping um, entrepreneurs get funding and mentoring. So um, exciting year ahead, um, you know, already landed our first client this year, somebody in, you know, probably unsurprisingly for many people in the crypto space, in the, in the, in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency blockchain space, um, launching a podcast for them. Um, had two successful launches already this year. So yeah, shaping up to be a really exciting year. I'm, I'm happy to get cracking with it. Amazing. Alex is also helping me launch my podcast. Um, Funny that. Rethink the story. So we're going to be interviewing a whole load of authors and, and change makers and, and game changers on there. So very excited for that as well. Now, Alex, what happens if someone hasn't got a podcast? Because one major barrier for someone to having a podcast, I think now, is when it is a little bit of effort but two, there are a lot of podcasts already. So why is now actually a good time for people to start thinking about really think uh, launching their podcast at a new level? So, I mean, I, I don't think we're anywhere near the, the top of the world when it comes to podcasts. You know, popular misconception is that everybody seems to have a, have a podcast now. But, you know, if you, if you just look at the numbers, I was speaking to a potential client earlier and you go, look, podcast started in around 2004. This time last year, January 2020, there were 850,000 podcasts, and it's just taken two years to get to nearly 3 million podcasts. That sounds like a lot, but if you put it in perspective, at any one time, there's around 10% of that that are actually generating new content every month. So there's around 250, 300,000 podcasts creating live content. Put that in comparison to like a, a YouTube where there's over a billion subscribers or blogs where i think there's over six million active blogs out there then it's it's tiny you know it's absolutely tiny so the fact that we it's taken a pandemic for especially in the uk i think you know in the us it's been established for far longer but it's taken a pandemic for people to be at home working from home to be furloughed off working looking for other ways to educate themselves entertain themselves um become content creators themselves. You know, it's taken that, that two years of a pandemic to do that. And it's just massive opportunity for me. The fact that you've got Clubhouse, you know, uh, that we've both been on. Off the back of Clubhouse, all these other apps have been launched. You know, Spotify mm -hmm. have got in the game, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, as people may or may not know, launching their beta version of audio. I'm excited rooms. for that, you know. I'm excited oh, for that. What, what do you reckon is going to happen? Because I think it's it's going to spark a new era, I think, of, of business side of Clubhouse, but maybe from a little bit more few experts in the industry rather than a, a mass of people. What's your thoughts there? I, I think it's going to be, it is a massive opportunity. I, I think this is the biggest opportunity, far more than, say, Facebook doing audio rooms or Spotify mm -hmm. or, you know, Twitter doing them, because I think 
a lot of, especially in our niche, you know, in, in the business world for business owners, if you're coming on LinkedIn and using it as a tool to network, to recruit, you know, all of those different things, then if you're on LinkedIn anyway, you're far more likely to listen for 30 minutes or 60 minutes to somebody's um, audio room rather than have to go and download a brand new app like Clubhouse. Those kind of barriers to entry, I think with mm -hmm. LinkedIn, they're removed, you know, and it's LinkedIn's play on on bringing, you know, a live event platform. They're then going to bring out a video version of that. So, you know, yes, we're live now, but their audio version and their video version is going to be more interactive. So we'll be able to bring people up on stage with us like here. We'll be able to get questions from the audience. So it's going to feel far more, I think, with a 3D experience than a kind of, you know, 2D experience like this. Well, I'm very excited for that. And I'm sure we'll be hosting some Alex and Sabrina shows on LinkedIn very soon. I'd love to jump into actually driving an audience to podcasts because there's so many different mediums. You have, um, as you've mentioned, Clubhouse, Green Room, um, the LinkedIn version, the Facebook, the Twitter version. What's some other reasons apart from the typical posts on social media? get your engaged audience that's actually going to drive traffic to your podcast to actually make it stand out in those first few weeks? Um, okay, yeah. So for me, you, you want to engage your existing audience, for one. So literally, you know, if you have an email list, obviously you're going to want to tell your, your email list about it. Um, your existing community that you, you have on social media, like we say, we started a Clubhouse Room last year. We, mm -hmm. we built a, a club of 10,000 people. We've both got followings that probably combined to, I don't know, 30, 40,000 or whatever. You know, you want to be telling those people and moving them to your podcast. And then for me, therein, you know, lies the opportunity is that if you're moving that audience um, when you launch your podcast, and I can deep dive a little bit more into kind of tactics around that. But if you actually you know, make an impact when you launch your podcast, it gives you the opportunity to get in front of a brand new audience and build a brand new audience, people who are already engaged with audio, people who already like audio as a platform and, and um, consume other podcasts. And it's often, you know, when I speak to different brands and they're asking me, you know, should I start a podcast? It's like, well, look, does your audience listen to podcasts? You know, do you know your target demographic? If you do, you should know if they consume audio. If they do and you're not on audio, then they're going to be listening to your competitors' mm -hmm. content. So it makes perfect sense for me to want to launch a podcast if you're a brand and your audience listens to podcasts because they love you. They love what you do. So why not be able to listen to what you do as well as maybe read your social media posts, read your blogs, watch your vlog, all those kinds of things. 100%. And you mentioned there as well about warming up the audience. I've heard different kind of ideas of how we can do this. You can have, for example... Uh, have a we'll launch a competition. You can launch a competition and say, hey, you're going to get access to this or you can get a discount to this or you can have some kind of secret or, or you know, limited element that only happens if you, for example, leave a review. What are some really innovative ideas that people can start doing to try and drive that audience to say, hey, this is my incentive to go leave a review, for example, or download this particular podcast? Yeah, so having this conversation in the studio yesterday, we're making a podcast for, for three guys, one of which, um, Danny Williams, who's on Love Island. You know, he's got a substantial following. The two other guys are, are um, in the health and fitness space. They're launching, um, or they've launched a personal trainer qualification that comes with a mental health qualification as well, which, you know, is really interesting, disrupting that industry. And it's like, okay, so Danny's got a massive audience on Instagram. How can we get those people who follow him from a TV show we followed him over to Instagram, which is a very visual platform. How do we get them to come and listen to him on audio? So I've left that with them. You know, let's launch a competition. Let's launch a giveaway. And for me, it's, you know, how can you personalize it for your audience? Because your audience usually wants access to you in some way, shape or form, rather than go back a few years ago. If you, you saw any competition online, people were offering like an iPad. Then it became an apple watch and it's like for me yeah well, it's nice to have but is that going to motivate me that's pretty generic that's not personal to me why am i interested in in this person and what they do so if it was danny for example who's trained as a personal trainer it would be like wow okay what if he offered a one-to-one -one pt session like you could win a one-to-one -one pt session for this guy that you you saw on love island you follow through to instagram you love what mm -hmm. he does something like that so 
if I was Sabrina Stocker and I was launching my podcast, I would be thinking about, okay, so Sabrina was in the event space before this. She does PR. What could Sabrina do as a, as a competition giveaway? Could it be, you know, some kind of live event where I get to, to meet Sabrina? Uh, could it be a little bit of PR, given that she runs uh, a company called Two Comma PR? Could I get some free PR out of that and get her expertise working for me and my business? Mm -hmm. That's what I would be thinking about personalizing it. And everyone's going to be different, yeah? Everybody's going to have, you know, different things. You know, we've even worked with people who, you know, never even had an email list to start with. They all like they didn't even have an Instagram profile. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a barrier to having a successful podcast. You just have to focus on a couple of things and play to your strengths and utilize them because there are so many moving parts, as you've found out to a podcast, um, that you just need to focus in on a couple of them and do those couple of things really, really well. Yeah, it's really interesting you say that. I know what my course is gonna be. I'm very excited. Do you want to hear the strategy? Hit me with that. Should I share the strategy? I'm gonna share the strategy. Share the strategy. All right. So I feel, I'm not going to lie, Alex, we've done so many, so many clubhouse rooms together on podcasting. I feel like I'm a pro. <laughs> <I feel> like <laughs> well, you should do. You've listened to enough of them, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you give the same answers, even though I haven't got one started yet. Right. Um, it's, it's really interesting. You know that's when you're you're surrounded by an expert. So explain something that is very, very easy to pick up on and, and re-explain as well. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a back end funnel. And what's the what's one of the biggest things that everyone needs, not needs, wants um, on an egotistical level that you think on Instagram? If there's one thing that they just want on Instagram because they want it. Say that again. Run that one past me again. I'm just I was fiddling with my phone to look at this online. Right. <laughs> oh, good. What is the one thing on Instagram you think everyone kind of wants? Popularity, numbers. Mm -hmm. One it's of the biggest things is the, the blue tick, right? The the Instagram. Oh yeah, okay. To be verified. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which is kind of going, taking it to the logical thinking of where I was going with that popularity. Yes. People, getting, rec people <laughs> recognize you as you know, the person in your space, etc. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And as a PR agency, obviously, we know what Instagram are looking for because you know. For, for whatever reasons I won't show on here. Um, so we're going to be creating a course saying how to get endorsed by Instagram. And that course is only going to be accessible for seven days when we launch for those people who leave a review and who download the podcast. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Which I is like very it. exciting. Yeah. Seven days. So you've got that, you know, limited availability, scarcity, which is a good one. The yeah. scarcity, add the, the scarcity element the urgency element, the amount of effort that they can do, they can pay a couple of grand for it or they could leave a review. And if you're going to do one of the two, I'd hope people would leave a review. Um, but by taking yeah, away that, that element as well, it forces in a sense for people who who want it, but it's also a mass product that everybody should really think start thinking about in their own industries. And also people should, I should probably frame it by going, you know, the, the key metrics when you're launching a podcast to get a successful podcast, to get it in a chart for your category, mm -hmm. i.e. get it in front of um, the ideal listeners that you want to listen to your podcast is to, you know, is to get your podcast in a chart um, and to get anybody to leave a review for anything these days is difficult. Okay. But with podcasting, you know, the three most important demographics are number of new subscribers, number of new uh, downloads and number of new ratings and reviews okay and why are ratings and reviews important i think they're great for social proof again if you get people to um you know rate and review your show you can screenshot that you can you can share that on your stories um and it's great social proof that people are enjoying your podcast it's only going to reflect well on your podcast it's only going to lead more people to be inquisitive and go and listen to your podcast as well. So for me, it's it's great to run a competition where you are asking people to rate and review because if they're going to rate and review, there's a really good chance that they're going to subscribe and download anyway as you part of that so. process. You don't, you, and you, you actually want people to like it, right? You don't want it just to be a, <laughs> a quick win for them. But you actually think, okay, how is my, my podcast adding value and it's been really interesting actually because on rethink the story we're going to be bringing on some some authors we have some great names lined up like the biggest names, give us in some names. The, come on give us some names, names. 
Uh, we have Phil Jones. We have Bob Berg. We have Imran Tarek. Um, Rob's going to come on as well. Rob Moore. That would be fun. So we've got a lot of uh, Wall Street Journal bestselling authors. And the amount of effort it takes to write a book surely means that there's such enough of a drive for somebody to want to share their particular um, expertise with the world. They're not going to do it hand, like just for the sake of doing it. And it's exactly the same as a podcast. So I, I do have a lot of respect for those who have uh, started the journey. You know Rob's going to come on and talk about his new podcast, don't you? I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he does. So I'd love to talk to you about when podcasting can go bad. And as you've probably seen in the media, the whole Molly May situation recently is the exact opposite of what press, you know, reputation dam damaging um, podcast appearances can do. How should somebody, you know, think about before they go on a podcast, what they're going to say and, and how they're going to frame it and how much training is there, especially for people in the public eye who are going to start putting themselves out there in order to risk mitigate some potential downfalls when they're having that podcast. It's funny, funny you say that we were talking about um, a couple of people who um, were recording, were recording, were, were recording a podcast and um it just didn't come out very well. And they recognized that as well. Um, there was too much, not that you can't do this on a podcast, but you know, it's all in context. And if you are, if you're looking to launch a podcast and you want to monetize it, you want to get a return on your investment. So you potentially want to get a sponsor on board. You want to get a brand partner, then loads of profanity laden <laughs> comments, loads of F bombs, basically things like that. Um, mm -hmm. getting getting smashed on your podcasts, you know, is probably not the best route to go there. And yes, it might be funny. Yes, it might be entertaining. But if you're actually representing somebody else, i.e. your business at the time or, you know, a another brand that you're doing a deal with, then that's probably not a great move. But, you know, that's something that's happened. So for me, there's two ways you can go with this. And, and it's definitely practice. And the easiest way to start a podcast is probably to get a mate or a couple of mates, jump mm -hmm. on something like this now, like a Zoom call or a StreamYard, like the platform that we're recording this on, and just have a conversation about something you're passionate about, okay? And then listen back to it. Don't be hypercritical, but just look at, you know, what's one thing we could do to improve this and then do it again. And what's one thing we can do to improve that? But don't, and this is a true story again. Somebody contacted me asking for advice about the podcast. And they said, just to let you know, we've done 35 practice episodes and we've got another, and I can't remember, we said that's more driving yeah. than I took. <laughs> it's crazy. And they were like, and we're going to do about another 20 before we launch a podcast. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there. Yeah. Okay. Launch it tomorrow. 35 rerun run throughs is ridiculous. You do not need to do that to get comfortable mm -hmm. with what you're going to talk about. But look, for me now, to start with, it was scripted, what I did. And that can come across as a little stilted, etc. And it's just getting confident in your own skin. And like anything in life, whether you're playing tennis or, you know, whether you're, you know, launching a podcast, it's just getting comfortable talking and having a conversation so if you're going to be doing a podcast that's interviewing people well then get someone you know that you're comfortable with that you already have a relationship with and just ask them some questions and make it conversational right. you know so whereas for a lot of people maybe coming on and just talking about a particular subject themselves you know what we call a solo episode is, is a bit more of a difficult thing to do whereas i think if you've got one or two other people to to kind of riff off then it's a far easier way to to go about doing it and how about if you're a guest on somebody's podcast? Because you don't really know what they're going to ask you, right? There's no idea that you can frame in advance about what's going to happen. So what happens if you do go on as a guest as a podcast, which we know is a very good um, way, when, you're, especially when you're launching a podcast, to have a podcast tour. I know I'll be starting mine very soon. Um, how does somebody prepare for those slightly awkward questions or for those questions that they're not really sure how they should position themselves or they might not want to stay away from, but you kind of are in the flow of a conversation and it naturally comes up. A good question. So I, I would say again, like you've done with me and you know, what we do is you in advance, a lot of podcasters will send you the questions 
that they are going to ask. But quite often, as I find, I'm sure you've done as well, is that you do go off script, and that's where oh, you I have... go completely off script. <laughs> Me too. I might have <laughs> like that way. You know, ten or twelve questions that I might want to ask that person, and quite often I'll be lucky if I get to the third one because we've just gone down another rabbit hole. It's just a super interesting conversation you know i was just listening to stephen bartlett's episode with ben francis the um, mm-hmm. gym shark ceo and they clearly went off piece but it was a really interesting conversation and it went on for like an hour and a half at like 30 minutes longer than his normal episodes but he's put it out still as a, as a 90 minute podcast and i think you you know you, i don't think you should shy away from asking certain questions but equally you know if you're not comfortable answering them don't pretend to know all the answers and flip that back onto the host. You know, what do you think about that? Or what's your opinion on that? That's like my kind of mechanism to, to deal with that because I get, I've been asked stuff in the past. <laughs> well, you know, you, you're not going to know everything about, about everything, are you? So I, th- sure. I, I think don't pretend. I think that's the worst thing you can do um, is pretend, especially if you do go off piste and it's not your subject matter. But I think, you know, ask for questions if you want those questions. Quite often, someone like Rob or myself, I don't, I don't want to have the questions. I don't need to have, look at the questions to start with. I'm just happy. I'm an, you know, an open book, but you'll get other people who are like, I don't want to talk about this and I don't want to talk about that in advance. You can always frame it like this is these are the subjects I want to talk about. You can do what you and I have done, which you put together a bio and you would send that in advance to the podcast you want to be on. And you'd be like, mm-hmm. I'm comfortable talking about, you know, these three subjects or, you know, these five subjects. And you try and stay on peace. <laughs> no, I can imagine that for sure. It's a really interesting one. I have been in podcasts also when I've mm-hmm. I've said something. I got asked a long time ago when I was in The Apprentice when I was twenty two. Um, I think I, I think it was about a year later, and a lot of I got asked the question: Have your cha- your friends changed since going on? Mm. And my answer at that time was: I just got rid of the toxic people from my life. And I very quickly found out who was toxic and who wasn't toxic. And at the end of the podcast, I was like, gosh, should I have said that? Like, what if somebody's listening? Like, <laughs> it was slowly weeded out of my life. That um, was an interesting comment. Yeah, it was. And looking back, I thought, you know what? If they were toxic, they probably wouldn't be listening to this podcast anyway. That was the first part because they probably, you know, why, why would they? Um, yeah. But the second was... I think it is getting a balance. I mean, sometimes, yes, it can be a little bit spun out of control, but it is getting a balance of showing something a little bit different because no one really wants to go on the same podcast every single time or or hear you on exactly the same time. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's okay to feel that particular way sometimes. Yeah, and it's also, and, 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 you know, for those people who are looking to launch a podcast and you are looking to get guests for your podcast, then... Trust me, the people that you are targeting to get on your show, they want a different angle. Mm-hmm. I've just had to do it with somebody that I, I've, I've gone back now and looked at my most popular episodes and it's gone, who would we like to get back on? So I've like, you know, reached out to an Oliver Cookson from My Protein, which sold, you know, he's now a billionaire, you know, from, from selling that business. Because that was a popular episode. What different angle? He's just released a book. Um, be a good guest for your show. Uh, yeah. What different angle? He's also represented by Ash Jones, who you know as well, um, who represents like, Stephen Bartlett, etc. Okay. Um, so people like that, it's like, you know, what different angle? Do they want to tell the story of starting that business again? Probably not. They might do, but they might not do. So, you know, look at what they're talking about on their social media. What are they passionate about? Because they're far more likely to want to come on and talk about that. And you can then steer the conversation to what you want to talk about and what your audience might want mm-hmm. to hear, but definitely a- appeal to, you know, their passions, their interests, their hobbies to get them on the show as well. Yeah. And it's really interesting you say that because the amount of times I've gone on as guest as a podcast and I've been asked the same questions, you know, how have you got to where you are now? Um, what was it like running a tennis company? I was like, gosh, the tennis company was a long time ago. And I just, <laughs> I feel as a guest and I assume it's the same the other way around that they want to have somebody who's generally very excited to interview them. I mean, every guest I've got from coming on for Rethink, I have to read their book and I don't just have to read it. I have to analyze it. And I'm on my second and third round of reading for some of them. And, you know, it just drives me a a curiosity for when I'm on in comparison to 
just giving it a quick Google, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's good that you'll actually be, you, you would have you got your year's reading like done in the first <laughs> two months of the year. Like at least, you know, book a month or whatever it is, you know, boom, now. Two books done. a week, Alex. Two books a week. Two books a week. Yeah. It's like being back in school, isn't it? I've done, I've done five books so far this month. I'm very excited. Have you? Oh, you're mm-hmm. kicking my ass. <laughs> Audio books, because it's very hard to get books sent to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising me. Um, what would you say would be kind of a, a bit of a summary of what somebody should do now if they're thinking, hey, I've got a podcast. How do I drive immediate traffic? What is some of the biggest trends that you think are going to come up in 2022? Yeah, good question. And, you know, something I've been doing is looking at what people whose podcast I listen to, what are they doing on social media? Um, You know, if you've read Russell Brunson, like you you and I have, you know, it's it's a regular exercise you should be doing, you know, what's working right now, what's getting people to to share, to like, um, to comment on social media. Mm -hmm. And it's something that, you know, we've looked at because, you know, as an agency, we'd create a set of assets for every client to share. And, and that's fine. But ultimately, if you're going to be putting the same you know, artwork image out, even if it's in a different format, at some point, audience is, is almost not going to see that. Do you know what I mean? So what I'm seeing now a lot more of, for example, are people getting super creative with their, with their social media posts. So instead of, let me try and think of an excerpt on one of these. Instead, it, um, a a social media post which is just a a quote from from that interview instead they might have a video running from a film clip that they might have seen it might be a clip from i don't know like the rocky movie or something like that and then you've got some some um a couple of words across the top of it that just kind of pop out of the screen like a you know that will just like flash up and you like look at that and it's it's just getting you to interact like all your senses you know instead of just you know video is dual you've, you've got subtitles you know, that have come in in the last year or two as well, far more. But it's trying to get creative with your posts, I think, and um, just trying to think of it from your audience's point of view, like, you know, your ideal listener. You know, what would they, what would get them to tell their friends about this podcast? What would incentivize them to do that? So I think it's just trying to, again, see what trends are out there, see, see what other people that you follow are using and for me it's like the podcast that i listen to like a russell brunson like us like a stephen bartlett you know what are they doing and it's far more you mentioned molly may before like when he promoted her episode it was chopping things up so that literally every couple of seconds there was like a cliffhanging moment and you were like uh uh-uh. Uh, 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 you know, what, what's going next? What's the game? And then boom, it's the link to the show. And you're like, I now want to go and listen to that episode. You know, mm, it's just like okay. heightening. You're really teasing somebody. Yeah, teasing somebody, kind of, you know, heightening the drama and, and the tension of what she's about to say. Um, it's not that I, not that I watch it, but I remember back in the day of, say, like EastEnders. And Which then the I episode ends. Say. You totally watch Love Island, <laughs> but EastEnders maybe not. <laughs> and then you know east enders ends and then you've got the dum 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 you know that kind of thing and you're like i gotta tune in tomorrow to find out what happened so it's that kind of thing i think that you know you really do um want to lead your audience to listen to that to that episode and you know tease that out in the in in the in the run-up in the runway to that episode actually dropping and, and coming out live as well so if the episode comes out on a friday spend that week sharing little snippets about that podcast so but you know not so much that they're not going to want to go and listen to that episode Mm -hmm. no I appreciate that it's um I'm excited I'll be using that little little golden nugget there on my own I think Alex yeah uh honestly I was looking at like a mutual friend of ours again Dodge um who runs Bournemouth Sevens he's just employed somebody um to just do that for his podcast you know to get a bit more creative with the posts that they're doing and I was just seeing what he was doing what Stephen was doing and thinking, okay, there's definitely people that I look up to and admire uh, are doing super creative things. So we need to do the same. Appreciate it. Well, there's your mission for 2022. It's got us in creative social media posts. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Love it. Thank you so much for joining me, Alex. Lovely to catch you up. You're welcome. You too, as always. For sure. Um, I will be posting this. Uh, So right now, actually, we are live on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. 
Um, I was going to say, while we're here, just this is anyone watching, um, this is also a bit of a test episode because we want to make sure everything's running nice and smoothly. Um, I'm going to go live on Instagram, Alex. Are I'm going to invite... I am, I am. And I'm going to invite you on. Um, so maybe let's have a little look. Okay, so I'll go on my Instagram. There we go. It's so long since, you know, I just said, I just took a picture. That's how long it's been since I've done a live on Instagram. Dear me. I need to do more of that. Take more pictures. Like this is like behind the yes. scenes of one watching. Um, if any, by the way, if you did enjoy this, we are going live every, uh, so next week, Monday, no, next week, Tuesday, we have uh, Imran Tarek, who is a Wall Street best-selling, hi there, Alex, best-selling yeah. author. Um, he's going to be joining us next, next week, Tuesday. We have Phil Jones joining us next week, Wednesday, with exactly what to say. And then the week after, we have some um, more fantastic author guests all around, actually, the, the art of inception and sales. So make sure you're tuning in then. Apart from that, should we have a little go at, going live on LinkedIn, on Instagram? Yeah, sure. There we go, right. Go for it. I haven't done one of them in ages. Amazing. I'm just also very curious to see if there's any feedback. So I was going to say, so you're going to do this at the same time, staying on LinkedIn. Okay. That's why I want to give it a little, little go because it could yeah. actually scare everyone off if it does go a bit crazy. Dun, dun, dun. Live. Fresh. Okay. Cool. Well, I've just gone live on Instagram now. So Ready? hopefully that's going to come through to you, Alex. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, okay, I can see it. I refresh my screen. You are now live on Instagram. A question for you. Um, you've got a different angle. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on my phone. It's not on the, yeah, I'm on my phone on there. For anyone joining me, by the way, we're just doing a little test to see how well it can go if I'm live on LinkedIn at the same time. So this is a very intense filter. Let me see if I can change that. It hello. Is, looks, it looks like, hello. Oh, no, I don't think that's going to work, is it? The filter. No, no it's not you. Actually, never mind. Right, I'll cancel that off. <laughs> okay. Oh, you ended never it. Mind. Yeah, I could hear oh, you, back, you. So it wasn't working. Oh, could you? Mm. Unless I have headphones in, I think it's a no go. Yeah, I think you need headphones. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Cool. Well, lovely. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm going to end it now, sure. and then we can catch up off screen. Okay. Thank you very much.